part of the DRBFM process. It is basically a worksheet to write the root cause analysis for each suspected or concerned component in your system. You did your visualization and you went all the way until you reached your change list and identified potential concerns and confirmed concerns and all the components that are non-concerned to the system and the neighboring systems around your part. Now you take one component that you, see, you think it's a potential or a confirmed concern and you create the root cause analysis for that component. Let's say you have an, um, let's say overheating radiator, right? So you have overheating radiator. So the radiator is overheating. Now I'm saying, why is the radiator overheating? Because engine temperature is raising. Engine temperature above, I don't know, certain degrees Celsius, right? And why the engine temperature is above a certain degrees Celsius? That's because the water flow is not sorry about that so why the engine is overheating that's because the water flow uh, is not going as intended through the engine and why that is happening because there is a blocked pipe through the radiation system or through the cooling system then you write that down why there is a blocked hose because there is a kind of debris inside the water cooling and why there is a debris in your water cooling system that's because the filter is not working or because the system is open or it's not well sealed or because the vehicle was being used um, in a condition that's not intended to then now you identify your root cause of your problem. In this case, you take corrective actions and you say, okay, so the vehicle can't handle, let's say if the root cause was because the vehicle was driving in sand for a long period of time and the system is not well sealed, then you will say, okay, is the application for our vehicle to drive in, a, in, a, in an environment with a, a lot of dust and so? If it's designed for that, then you want to do corrective actions to let the vehicle being able to drive through those conditions without overheating. Again, I'm, I'm just making an example here. It doesn't make <laughs> it's not necessarily true in engineering terms. I'm just giving an example how you follow the five ways from the cause to the root, like from the phenomena, from the observations, all the way to the root of the problem. So you can kind of proof if your analysis of 5y or root cause is right you say okay the vehicle was driving in sand for a long period of time therefore there was a leak or there was an exposure in the system that made the debris go inside the cooling system therefore the pipe clogged over time therefore the water flow was not going through the engine in an efficient way therefore engine temperature increased therefore we had an overheating radiator or an overheating vehicle and so on that that kind of mentality you know you're doing a root cause going from a pyramid style top down style and uh, seeing where the problem is coming from through following all possible causes for that problem and when you do that for all the parts that are included in your system or all sub assemblies and and components and subparts this take a while it take it take a quite amount of time um, in order to to identify what's going on and what's the root cause and probably you need to do a couple of design review with the design members and the testing engineers and all those involved people in order to define the right 5y chain to identify the root cause of that problem but that's one way to do it. There's another way to do the five whys. Of course, you're free to do it the way you want it as long as you go from the phenomena or from the observation all the way to the 
real root cause, root cause of that problem. So another way to do it, we have an example here for a 360 view vehicle module. So the module assembly called by the time ABC. Then you have explorative view, if you can imagine. You have part A, part C, and part B. So it's like that module was, you can imagine it as enclosure. That enclosure having upper and lower housings, and in the middle there is a PCB doing all those calculations and uh, uh, sensory readings, and all those computational powers to in order to identify and to give the right output. So you have upper housing, lower housing, and you have a PCB. So for upper housing and lower housing, the functions for that for that housing, it serves as a heatsink or it help in mounting and so and so for PCB it do the processes for the input data from cameras and so on now we're saying okay then why the housing is used as is used as a heat sink uh, then you say to increase the heat dissipation why the customer decided the module location then you want to say why it's decided to be there so all of those are answering why we're having in case we're having a suspected overheating in the future then we can ask questions why the modules located that way why the module design is that way why the heat dissipation is that way and so on but I would follow the first step like go piece by piece and follow uh, that procedure will be uh, making more sense in identifying the root cause even though it could be a lengthy process if you have a bigger system you can use this way but still you wanna uh, you wanna go here if you if you conclude that you have overheating here then you wanna go uh, with your five whys like why is it doing this because of this why it's doing the next step because of that and so on until you identify your root cause of the problem now again uh, all the DRBFM approach is following the proactive problem prevention and the five whys is part of that problem prevention style. So you are thinking, I think this vehicle will be overheating because of this and this and this uh, causes. Now you want to remind ourselves what is the systematic approach to keep the process of proactive problem prevention as efficient as possible. Again, visualize then you want to think deeply about potential concerns you clarify those concerns and causes then you discuss the concerns with experts that's what we said in could be five whys could be part of this step so you clarify concerns and causes why they're happening and the root cause analysis of it you go back to experts if you can't identify a certain failure mode or a certain failure in a certain component then you discuss with the experts and uh, try to identify why this is happening and what's the sources of problems behind it then you reflect the preventive measures on the design and, man and and manufacturing so you are doing corrective actions in this case and go back with design review members and do the drbfm process again on that part make sure in your change matrix or in your change list that is not a concern anymore with the approval of all design members now building a design story so when somebody reading your drbfm sheet from any design members that you call to your meetings they need to have a kind of a story you have your design they understand what's the environment about it they understand all the potential parts assembly sub assemblies everything is called out they understand the function of each part and each assembly and each sub assembly and eventually they understand why you identify in your change matrix why each concern or potential concern is identified that way and what do you think the source of that problem is coming from and who's involved with that so in your change matrix you identify the change then you identify the function in your function list previously and you identify the relationship and general concerns by going from the change point comparing that how does it reflect that function or how does that function reflect that change list then you arrange the changes and you detail the functions then you de develop the problem statement so i'm not saying you want to develop problem statement in specific but as you're moving forward in the process of rbfm you are developing a story you're developing a problem statement whoever is following that part from page one to to the last page of your rbfm worksheet 
he is able to identify why do you think this is a failure uh, as clear as possible now if you want to identify the change just in a more visual way so identify the change happens through visualizing the parts and surrounding break down the assemblies and sub assemblies detail the changes and compare the old versus the new models or old versus new parts old versus new designs and so on